Okay, today we're going to give you one less reason to jump into the IDE because we're going to get debugging working in NeoVim. Let's get into it. Okay, so this simple code is basically just a withdraw function. Imagine a bank account. So we've got a balance here. And if the amount that someone's trying to withdraw is more than their balance, then we're going to throw an error. Otherwise, we're going to withdraw the amount from their balance. So very simple. Let's get a debugger working so we can walk through this function. Okay, so the first thing you'll need is an NVIM DAP. This is the debug adapt protocol, which has been implemented for NeoVim. And it basically allows you to debug as long as you have the right adapter for your language. So if we just scroll down here, and if you go to this debug adapter installation, you can follow the guide for any language. However, I do recommend that if your language is supported, you use one of the community adapters that are already existing. If I go to the wiki, sorry, all no extensions here. As you can see, language specific ones, there's a debug adapter for Python, for Go, JavaScript, etc. You get the story. Okay, and you're going to want to add these lines to your config. So it's your NVIM DAP and the dependency along with the language adapter that you've chosen. And that's it. That's the that's the configuration for Golang, really simple. Um, for another language, it might be a little more complicated, uh, but obviously just follow the guides in the repo. Uh, but I know for Golang, it's quite simple. And then if you just jump in to your project here, let's add a couple of breakpoints. So if we do colon DAP uh, toggle breakpoint, We'll put one there and we'll put one at the end here. I'm also put one in here. Why not? So if you look in the sign column there, we have three B's B for breakpoint, 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 as you can see. And if we run through this code, we should be able to hit these breakpoints like so. So if I just open up the test file and I go down to the withdraw tests, let's run withdrawing with a valid amount, for example. So if I do test run here for this test, and as you can see, we've hit the breakpoint. And if you look, we have a little arrow there because that's that's where the breakpoint currently is. Perfect. So now if, let's have a look at some of these um, things we can do. So we can do dap eval. And if I do dap eval, let's say we want to see what the amount is. We can just type amount if we write this file. And there we go. It now says 50. Similarly, if I want to check what the w dot balance is, write that file. And there we go. We got we got the w dot balance so i can debug uh, the evaluation just like that with just basic nvim dap and if we do dap continue now it's going to hit the next breakpoint which is here and we can now check the balance so what was it previously it was 100 balance and we minus 50 right so if i do uh, dap eval now and we type in w dot balance now we should see oh yes look so the balance was previously 100 but now it's 50 because obviously we've minus 50. So we can really see how our function all works. Now if we want to go a step further, we can try one where we know it fails. So if we try where to withdraw when there's more than the amount. Okay, and now we can see we've hit the breakpoint again. This time, let's have a little look. So if we do dap eval again, we write the file, we got 150. And let's check the w dot balance. Write the file, we got 100. So we're trying to withdraw 150, but we only got 100. So that means we're not going to hit this breakpoint this time. We should hit the error breakpoint. So let's just check that out. So if I close this and I'll do dap continue. And as you can see, we have hit this breakpoint just like that. So yeah, nice and easy. Now there's a way to level it up. So let's get another plugin. So what we're going to be using next is NVIM dap virtual text. Now what this does, it's going to add virtual text of the values while your, while your debug is running. So if I just quickly jump over to the config here, we'll add this in here. And then obviously we're going to need setup function for this one and then we just do dot setup just like so and then if we jump back over to this config we'll restart okay and if we now run this we should now get virtual text and as you can see there we have the balance there and the amount in the headers perfect and similar if we just do dap continue we should now see the balance is updated as you can see in the header there the balance changed from 100 to 50. So yeah, virtual text is a great one if you don't want to be doing the eval all the time. And then we're just going to go into the next one, which is obviously a UI so that you don't have to do all this fiddling around. So it's up to you. I mean, some people prefer to have a full-blown UI. And if you want a full-blown UI, then you want MVM DAP UI. Basically what this does, it's sort of like an IDE. So you've got your local variables there. You can view all your things. And it's got loads of different pretty windows. You know, it looks all nice. I personally prefer MVM DAP view which basically just has a little pop-up, as you can see there at the bottom. And you can toggle through the menus that you want to see. 
but it's not as intrusive as you know this takes over your whole this takes over your whole screen whereas this one it's just like a little pop-up you can appear and disappear so if i quickly try to set this up we just need to add mvm dap view in there and then obviously i've got some key maps that i like to use so i do dt to toggle it toggle a pop-up i do db to toggle a breakpoint dc to continue and dw to watch a variable and i'll show you how that comes into play in a minute so hit the breakpoint tool and now if i do leader dt as you can see we now have a little menu at the bottom where we can view all the breakpoints we can view the logs we can view all sorts so this repl one is a cool one so it's just basically like a console where you can interact with the tests so if i do amount nice and that we get 150 because that's what the amount is if i type balance we get 100 so you can query things if i do error unable to value exp expression because that doesn't exist it's not a variable in the in the debug similarly i can do watch things so if i want to watch this i'll do leader dw which was my watch same with the w.balance lead dw and as you can see we can watch these variables now we should because we're watching it we should see the balance go down to 50 down here when we continue the test and as you can see just like that so yeah i mean you can imagine if you've got tons of if you've got a very long function and there's lots of different variables you want to watch what's going on you can manually set which ones you want to watch or you can just use the scopes which will give you all the variables anyway the local variables and yeah it's pretty cool let me know do you use debugging in your new setup see you in the next video